Yeah, I did. Okay, we're all good? Mm-hmm. How do we know when it's ready? Okay. All right. We think we're recording, hopefully. Uh, I'm, in past years, I had uh, in, gotten in some conversations about my home-built uh, network tax storage, and people seemed kind of interested, so I decided to give a talk about that this year. Um, my name's Trey Howard. I'm not a Linux professional, just a hobbyist. Um, you know, outside there's some wonderful professionals that will build you one of these. They will give you a warranty, support, hot swap bays, and uh, it will reliably boot before uh, you uh, try to give a talk about it. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, you can have all the fun of just doing it yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's we'll start with a case. Um, this Fractal Design Node 304 uh, can hold um, six hard drives, and um, so those white things, you, there's thumb screws, and you can just pull those out, and then it's, there's two drive, drives hanging from either side. Um, and um, so that's how it, it holds them pretty securely, but, you know, definitely not hot swap. Uh, the motherboard I have for this is a Supermicro uh, Xeon D. It has four cores and 10 gig networking. Um, and uh, accepts ECC RAM. Were they saying they can't hear me, or? Oh, can everyone in the room hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, at first, I started with uh, 16 gigs of RAM and four four gig kick, um, uh, sticks. Um, later on, DDR4 got super cheap, and I uh, upgraded to uh, a pair of 16 gigs for a total of 32. And that did not work. It just would refuse to boot. Um, I kind of was really stumped by that and went back to using the 16 gigs for a long time. And one day I got a wild hair and decided to read the manual. And de buried deep in that um, is it's not like a desktop board where you just have to keep, keep them in the right slots. It has specific configurations that'll work. And the 16 gig thing that I had originally was approved. And the next step up was 64. So I had to buy a, another pair of 16 gig kicks, uh, sticks, and that works fine now. <clears throat> um, 
hard drives. Um, at first I started with name brands, um, Western Digital Reds. Um, getting a, a NAS, one that says NAS on it or, or some kind of um, uh, array kind of approved storage is important because on a normal consumer hard drive, it will try to keep on writing and not alert the operating system that a sector is starting to go bad. A NAS hard drive will, the first, it, maybe it tries one or two times, and then it starts telling the OS that a sector is going bad. And um, ZFS is smart enough to mark that sector bad and go on and use something else. Um, which is a much better solution. Um, I don't know, I think it probably, in 2018, we learned that Western Digital was lying to us. At some point, they had switched from CMR to SMR, and the difference is CMR is conventional magnetic cording, and, it, and it's... Um, the, the bits are aligned into their sectors um, and, and there's a decent amount of spacing in, in between each bit. SMR, they're almost on top of each other and it uses some kind of complex magnetic magic um, to disambiguate which, where which one bit is in versus the next. Most of the time, that's just fine. Uh, however, when you have to do a bunch of writes all at once, it gets a lot slower on the SMR drives. Also, not normally a problem, but if one of your drives dies and it has to rebuild it, then it takes a lot longer for an SMR. I've decided that for my home system, that doesn't matter because I have good backups, I'm not, no one is really relying on me to get this thing back up and running. Um, I can wait, and if another drive d dies before I can get it rebuilt, I have good backups that I'm confident in. Um, re reliability has been shockingly good um, since 2016 when I started this little project, only one drive has died. Um, so um, I, I think worrying too much about it when you're just a home system is, uh, is fine. You can buy off-the-shelf drives. You don't need anything super complicated or expensive. Um, also, SSDs. Um, a lot, well, I'll go into uh, the caching more later, but because I have so much RAM, it uses that to cache a bunch of the information, and even though the, these are super slow um, rotating disks, um, I can still serve up content pretty fast uh, because it's it doing a good job of caching. So I haven't felt the need to move to SSDs yet, maybe in another five years or so. Um, others hardware, because that um, motherboard I chose was designed for a rack that has fans pushing stuff across, and this is in a uh, consumer uh, enclosure. Um, it does have uh, fans in the front that are cooling the drives, but nothing really for the CPU. Um, I did buy this small 60 millimeter fan, and um, kind of jury-rigged it on top of the, uh, the um, heat sink. And then, of course, an SSD for the OS. Okay, now I'll talk about uh, ZFS. Um, and when I started learning, I was kind of fiddling around with Linux before 2016, but when I started learning about ZFS, it really um, impressed on my, the, the power of Linux and what open source could really do. Uh, because um, the guys at my work, where they use Windows, they pay tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for some uh, custom solution, and I'm doing this for free. 
Um, so I'm going to talk about CFS terms. Uh, the top level thing is a Z pool. And that's the collection of all of your hardware, all of your uh, drives. Um, and the next level down is a VDEV. And mostly this is uh, your storage. Um, and I'll talk about different configurations for that in a bit. The other things, you can have a slog, which is to help you cache writes, but I don't think that's applicable to a home user. You'd really want it if you were trying to run a database and you didn't want half a transaction written and um, the, the, slog, the, the secondary log device um, helps take the, the, the synchronous writes, stores them all at once, and then it, then it proceeds to write it to the real storage. Um, there's also a cache, also known as a level two arc. Uh, that helps if, it, if the caching has exceeded what is available for in RAM, it can also use uh, that cache device. Um, with 64 gigs, I, um, I don't feel the need to use that, so I just have storage. Okay. Different storage types. Of course, you can just have a single disk. You can have a mirror where there, there's copy on two drives. Um, then the, the RAID levels where you have um, at least three drives in a, in a RAID. And uh, if it's RAID Z1, one of those is for parity. RAID Z2, Z2, two levels of parity, et cetera. And the parity means you can lose that many drives from that array, and it still knows how to rebuild um, the data. Uh, and then the, the, the final level there for terms is uh, the device, which is a physical drive. <clears throat> okay. More terms. Uh, when you're setting up your ZFS array, um, you need to know the sector size of your drives. Uh, if you're using the, some really old drive, they might be using 512-bit um, um, sectors. But um, almost anything remotely modern drive you would get are using 4K, um, and you need to set this particular um, parameter called A shift, which uh, defines how large that sector is, and it's um, it's the exponent, like two to the power of nine is a 512 block, power of 12 is a 4K block, etc. If you don't do that. It actually defaults to a shift 9, 512 blocks, and uh, you could even have a super fast Samsung SSD in there, and it will perform like a spinning rust. Because um, when it has smaller blocks than what the, is physically in the drive, then it'll read the first 512. The drive could have easily returned the whole block because it. It reads that its physical sector size, but instead, ZFS only gets the 512, and then it goes back and gets the next 512, and so on. And it's a whole lot faster if you figure out what that sector size is, um, and you have to set that when you define uh, your VDEF in setup. I won't go through all the commands. That, that won't make sense. Um, you have to look it up, that up in your own, but there's plenty of guides for that kind of thing. Um, just know that that sector size is super important. You can't change it afterwards. All you can do is start over. Uh, next important thing, uh, data sets. Um, that's essentially a mount point, and it has in other important properties. Uh, a quota would be the maximum uh, disk space it'll take up. Um, and then important things like compression, 
Uh, ZFS makes really good use of compression. Um, unless you're storing um, uh, already compressed media like videos or pictures, you're probably going to want to turn compression on. Um, another killer feature of ZFS is copy and write. Sectors aren't modified. It just goes out and writes to ne the next sector and marks that new sector as the, the new version of truth and the old sector um, is left alone. Now, you can go back and get that old uh, sector um, if you make use of snapshots and that is the snapshot records all the current sectors within that VDEV at that time, saves them, and then you can start doing your modifying other sectors, and then if you figure it out that, that you uh, messed up a file or deleted a whole directory by mistake, you can say, I want that snapshot, bring this back up and, and make it the live one. Um, killer feature of ZFS number two is data verification. Um, I talked about how you, you can, if you have that RAID um, set up, you can lose a drive and it'll, and it'll figure that out and, and rewrite the lost data. Um, also, if you lose an individual sector on a drive, um, it'll be able to reproduce that. And it does that because there's um, a hash of the data stored in metadata on the, the extra drive in the array. Um, and you can run a scrub that validates all that metadata across the pool. I schedule that in cron to run um, early Monday morning every week. Um, and if you find out that a disk needs to be replaced, you go and put it in and then do a resilver command and it uses the metadata to rebuild what should be on your, what was lost on your lost drive onto the new replacement. Um, so this has been Running most of the reliability at home. Um, if you shut it down and bring it to a conference, that's that's trouble. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, I, as I said, I trust my backups, so that if I've while moving around or moving too much in the stage and cause a head crash, I'm confident that I restore things one way or another. Um, <clears throat> But um, uh, I think I'll start talking about how I use it. Um, of course, they store family pictures on it. Um, for a long time, I've been using MB uh, as a media server. Uh, it has competitors that are pretty similar, Jellyfin, Plex. Cody is a bit different in that it runs on another box but can access file shares to this. Um, I'm fooling around with Jellyfin, um, but for the most part, MB is but has been what has worked for me for a long time. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. can't see that. Um, Thank you. 
that's what it would be. Oh, now you pop up for there. Thanks. <laughs> I have to remember the IP address. Dun, 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 two dot zero dot one oh nine. No, I was typing that in the wrong place. That's a bummer. Let's try this. Bet that's too small for everyone to see. Yep. Uh, oh, will that work here? Oh, awesome. That's much better. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to show you a few uh, CFX commands. That's what I wanted to show you. So this is the status command. Um, uh, it complains about it being an older version. I think when I upgraded to 2204 Ubuntu, um, it wanted to upgrade the ZFS version. But if I run the zpool upgrade, that never breaks for some reason. And it, I've never really fooled with it. But what I wanted to show you is the last time I ran the scrub, it repaired zero bytes, so all, everything was good. Um, it lists the different drives um, in the array. Um, and if there was a problem, it would, sh it would show read or write errors or checksums. And then, then I would know that I would need to go out and buy a replacement drive and get ready to do a resilver. All right, I'm going to try to bring up MB. I'm not sure why that is coming up. Normally, it should uh, serve up a, a web page on port 8096. Um, and it shows all of my media and um, family pictures. Yeah.
Oh. But if I'm able to connect with SSH and everything, wouldn't Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Proxy, you asked? So um, when I use this at home, I only, I haven't let it punch through the network. I only use it at home. I, um, I kind of don't trust my... Uh, my network security sufficiently to uh, I turned off my, my wireless, and now I'm back to forbidden. OK, well, maybe that part of the, uh, the demo is a bust. Uh, but I think Z ZFS is the more important part and the hardware I chose. Any questions about that? once and decided to do ZFS on root on Arch and dated um, DKMS modules would break and then I'd be at the grub command line for two weeks. Do you use like a kernel that's got ZFS built into it or are you? Um, your mic is dropping in and out. Oh, okay. Um, I can say that I've always used Ubuntu because it gets baked in, and that's okay, that seems to work a lot better. Um, in the back, behind you. See, uh, I, I, well, you know. Obviously, I've made a bunch of other compromises, um, but okay. He asked, "Do you think ECC is uh, important?" Um, so obviously, I've made a bunch of other compromises and said I trust my backups. Um, but on the other hand, if ZF, if a cosmic ray comes through and flips a bit in your RAM, then the scrubs are going to come along, and and it might. Um, actually think that it should be, f you know, it might replicate the error onto the disk. And then it would replicate the errors onto my backups. Um, so in ECC, um, 
certainly you have to pick your motherboard and your CPU uh, carefully, but it, it's not all that much more expensive. Um, I think it's worth it. Um, certainly if you're just trying something out, go ahead, but um, um, I it does protect you from that kind of silent corruption that could, um, you wouldn't know it and it could filter out to your backups and then you, you would lose something. I'll just repeat it. Okay, I'll just yell. Just yell. <laughs> what went into your decision to pick that particular super micro board? Uh, he asked, what was went into my decision to pick that particular super micro board? Um, I liked that, um, you know, it, it fit into the mini ITX form factor. Um, and this case really kind of drove that. I could, because I could pick, fit six drives, uh, and um, um, then, the, then it held a mini ITX form factor, so that drove me to, to pick that form factor. Um, I could have picked a, a Intel Core i3. There are some models of those that, that support ECC. Um, and if I went, was to do it over again, I think I might go that route. Um, Maybe I certainly would have wouldn't have run into that weird RAM thing if I had done that. Um, but I, I kind of liked that it was really low power. I, I'd have to go back to the specs, but I think it's like um, 16 watt TDP on that CPU. Is that a dual socket? No, no, it's single, uh, single socket. It, single socket embedded. Um, and it has that passive um, CPU just mounted onto it, uh, C CPU cooler. Um, and that's why I've got this separate fan, but there's a question in the back. Um, I do, it's a five disc uh, RAID Z1. So one of those five could fail and I would still be able to resilver and get it back up and running. Yeah, everything within a VDEV needs to be the same size or well, it could be a different size but then you're wasting space on anything that's larger. Uh, if you wanted to upgrade from four terabytes to six terabyte drives, you could re start replacing individual runs and re-silver each time. And eventually, once you get all six, I mean, everything in that VDEV to upgrade it to six terabyte, then it will start using uh, the larger, the more space. Um, if you if you really want to do like a mixed set, um, what you can have multiple VDEVs, and then VDEV one can have six terabyte drives, and the other one have four terabyte drives, uh, and then you could even mirror those, um, mirror the two VDEVs. Uh, given this only holds six drives. You know, I don't have. Oh, I would have to do like two V devs of three, um, and wasting using two discs for parity didn't seem to make sense to me. Um, if you had a bigger case that it have more drives, maybe that would make a lot more sense. Not yet. 
Um, I think the the RAM does a great job of, of buffering and delivering um, good speed. Um, typically, it's only me using it. I do have some backup jobs running from my wife's computer, but um, or or they'll go out to, the, to it to like go find a family picture of something. But um, uh, I, I don't think it's worth the, um, until the, the price per terabyte of SSD gets a lot closer. It is on a commercial desktop power supply. Um, so I'm actually not sure what those words you mentioned would mean, but I think the answer is no. Oh, oh uh, so I do have like a separate box that is a UPS. Um, and I tend to like to use those because even more than power outages, I think it extends the longevity of your, your hardware. Um, so. Um, the house I'm living in now has, we have buried cables. We get pretty, um, very few power outages. So I haven't tested in a while, um, but I, it has, once somebody moved here and the house I lived in before, well, no, I wasn't on this uh, NAS project last time we moved. Uh, next. Okay, yeah. So I have a second relatively similar uh, do-it-yourself system in an older case in a much slower CPU and it's not ECC RAM, um, that um, I just uh, do a, um, what's the uh, uh, copy command? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, rsync. Um, there is a feature within ZFS, uh, log shipping or something like that? No, that's the sequel thing. Z yes, ZFS send, thank you. Um, but you have to have the exact same VDEV set up and for that to work. So, and then for offsite, I have um, some Western, some external hard drives, uh, eight terabyte external hard drives, and I can uh, R sync to that. And I have um, three of them, two of them are at my father-in-law's house and one's at mine. And uh, hoodie or no? Yes. Yeah. You mentioned like family photos and stuff like that. What do you use to manage it? Because like every time I try to do that on my server, it's really messy and like it's hard to share those photos. Okay. I I wish I had uh, gotten the. Okay, what, I, what am I doing to, uh, for the sharing the family photos? Uh, I am using MB for that. Um, it, it's, it only organizes them by date. Um, I'm not doing any fancy um, AI recognition of faces and tagging. Uh, maybe that's a project for another future day, but um, um, it, at least I can go through and and search by date and, and, and find stuff. Uh, uh, did you enable encryption on the drive? Like, did, did I enable cr encryption? Uh, I did and carefully consider that. Uh, so it, e even if you take out, like uh, there's a mostly failed drive, it has a bunch of bad sectors, you th think that it's gonna fail but you don't want to wait for that, so you take it out, and you're going to dispose of it. Um, I've decided that I'm not going to sell them on eBay. 
I'm just going to physically destroy them and not worry about encryption because the off chance that I forget the key, then I'm totally hosed. Um, and I'd rather just destroy the drive when I'm done or reuse it somewhere else in my, my maybe in my backup um, NAS or something. Um, so e even though that it's splitting larger files across drives, if there's a small file, um, it, it could end up residing on a single disk and someone who knew how to go access um, ZFS file system um, I could get to that. Um, and anything super important like taxes or my Bitcoin key, then I encrypt that um, as a file and put it on there. So it, encryption for the VDEV as a whole, no. Um, no. Um, mostly I'm just kind of careful and, you know, I would probably try to find it. I'm probably doing a backup from my desktop or laptop to the NAS and I have a copy of it somewhere else when I've messed up. Uh, like I said, I didn't um, punch anything through the network, so I feel um, you know, just being w m normally just on my own network, the uh, a big protection. And um, but it, you know, if I was exposing MB or uh, Jellyfin to uh, the internet, then I would probably think a lot more about that, and that might tip me over into doing compression. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, patch frequently. Red shirt. Um, I have Samba shares, and that's how I usually do my backups. Um, distros, Linux distros. Uh, I'm, I have Jellyfin installed and I'm kind of playing around with it. Um, I haven't gone to the effort of doing any kind of like Docker setup to isolate all of these things. Maybe come 2404, I'll, I'll rebuild it and try that. Okay, I think I'll go find my ending slide so I have contact information. Okay, you can contact me in email, email or Discord. I've abandoned Twitter and haven't uh, uh, figured out a replacement. Um. You know, I should I should figure that out. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my project for the rest of this uh, conference, figuring out matrix.
Back there. Um, another good thing to try out. Mostly I'm not a very social person. But <laughs> yes. <Thank you. laughs> well, thank you very much for coming. And uh Thank the Linux gods that I was able to get anything at all to demo. <laughs> What's that?